it's funny being an IT company, a uh, cybersecurity company, we focus a lot on just maintaining your operations from an IT perspective. We focus on maybe planning like disaster recovery, just in case there's an incident, you know, to get your IT functions back up and running. But the last couple of years has taught something that, that extends way past IT and it's all about business continuity. How do we continue to run our business? How do we operate our business when things that happen to us that are outside of our control, such as a pandemic, supply chain issues, maybe it's a natural disaster, like a fire or a hurricane or a tornado or an earthquake. All of these things are important for us to understand and take into consideration in business. So which comes first, business continuity or disaster recovery? Which one matters most? Which one should you start with? So let's talk about it. All right, welcome back. I'm Chris Burns from Techie Gurus. I know every week I bring you super exciting stuff. I mean, you get your coffee ready, you're ready, you're like, all right, I gotta watch that. Techie Gurus guy, it's Tuesday morning, I'm ready. This is super exciting, and yeah, it's not. I, I, I realize that a lot of stuff that we talk about isn't super sexy, it's not exciting. It's not must-see TV. However, it, very, it is very important to your business. And this week, this month, we focused on, we're going to focus on backup, disaster recovery, and business continuity. But today, it's kind of the comparison talk about, okay, what is disaster recovery? What is business continuity? Why is it important to my business? And what are the things that maybe, let's, we'll talk about three things that you need to understand, um, three terms that you need to understand to kind of get you started on this journey. So first of all, let's start off with what are the differences between business continuity and disaster recovery? All right, so let's kind of look at business continuity and disaster recovery, but let's start, first start, let's start off with an incident. Uh, ransomware's in the news, let's just start with that. So you come into your office and somebody runs up to you and they're like, we can't use our computers. There's this message on there and it's gonna say something like, your files are all encrypted, you need to pay us Bitcoin to this wallet, blah, 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 you can call here, whatever. The, the point is, your business is down. Your computers are all encrypted. There's nothing you can do. So where does business continuity and disaster recovery fit in? Let's kind of talk about that first. Now that we've determined that there's an incident, we have to have a response. So the key difference between a business continuity plan and a disaster recovery plan is really when the plan takes effect. The business continuity plan requires you to keep your operations functional during the event and immediately after. So how do we deliver our services? How do we make our products? Things like that during a ransomware event or maybe during a hurricane or something like that. We have to keep the business going forward or else the business might die. Disaster recovery, on, on the other hand, focuses on how do you respond and recover from the event and how do you return to normal? So while they both incorporate the after response, disaster recovery is about getting yourself back to where you were before the event occurred. Business continuity is all about trying to operate during the event and getting back to where you were before. So an example, uh, an easy example for like business continuity would be, hey, a hurricane destroyed our office building. Our business continuity solution could be we, we provide services that people just work from home. Maybe we have software as a service applications. People can just work from home. It's a little different in a ransomware situation because in a ransomware situation, we can't use our p computers. We can't use our servers. How do we keep operating? There should be downtime procedures and things like that, but like, how do we keep operating? What's the risk of the business? How long can this last? And then this is where, you know, your disaster recovery solution would then come in and say, how quickly can we get back to, to where we were before? Because that matters. And that brings us into three metrics that we need to track to make sure that our businesses can survive an incident. So before we get to those three acronyms, those three metrics that I talked about, let's talk about BIA or business impact analysis. And what is that? It's a way to predict the consequences of a disruption to your business and its processes and systems. And we do this by collecting data. We do this by looking at every aspect of the business. Uh, we look at even how something's produced or how something's delivered. And we use that data and we use it to develop strategies for the business to recover in the case of an emergency. Now, a business impact analysis is all about analyzing the operational and financial impacts of a disruption. So of ransomware, of a hurricane, of a fire, things like that. And it includes things like loss of sales and income delayed sales or income, increased expenses, regulatory fines, contractual penalties for missing deadlines, and even to a loss of customers and their dissatisfaction with the delays. 
for our plans. And this is part of the business continuity. Now, as, if we, as we move into that, there's three terms that we're gonna talk about that are part of a, a business impact analysis, and that's going to be RPO, RTO, and MTD. So that's recovery point objective, recovery time objective, and maximum tolerable downtime. All right, now that we've got this exciting information out of the way, let's talk about RPO real quick. RPO is recovery point objective, and it's all about what is our data loss tolerance in our business. Now, it's, it's used in business continuity, it's used in business impact analysis to identify the maximum targeted period in which data can be lost without severely impacting the recovery operations. So for example, if the business could not lose more than a day's worth of data, the RPO has to be 24, would be 24 hours or less. Now, it's very useful to help to determine the frequency of backups for a given system as well. So let's move on to RTO. So RTO is recovery time objective, and it's all about restoration goals. RTO is a term that's used in business continuity on the business impact analysis to identify the planned recovery time for a process or system which should occur before reaching the business's maximum tolerable downtime. So for example, if a business process could not be sustained for more than one day without normal operations, then the RTO should be less than 24 hours. So RTOs can be helpful in determining what kind of recovery and redundancy may be required in the business, whether you need a hot site or a cold site or something where you can move into really quickly to keep continue your business. So with maximum tolerable downtime or MTD, that's, refer, that's referred to sometimes as maximum allowable downtime or, or MAD. It represents the total amount of downtime that can occur without causing significant harm to your business's mission. So MTD is important to define so that continuity planners, when we're doing our business continuity plan, can select and implement appropriate recovery measures and procedures to ensure that downtime does not exceed acceptable levels. An example would be if you have a contractual obligation to somebody that you have to deliver this service within 72 hours of a question and they come in and they, they ask that question and you can't deliver within those 72 hours, you're going to be contractually obligated. So you're Maximum tolerable downtime needs to be less than that. So let's talk an example of, of MTD, maximum tolerable downtime. So remember that maximum tolerable downtime isn't really a technical metric. It's more of an organizational metric. So even if your RTO to get your IT systems back up and running is eight hours or 24 hours, let's say 24 hours in this case, your maximum tolerable downtime might take into consideration all the work it takes to catch up. So the, the MTD has to be longer than the RTO, but it also has to be realistic to the business. So if you can't be down for more than three days, so 72 hours, and your RTO is 24 hours, that means you have to be caught up within that, that difference between 24 and 72, or you have 48 hours to catch up. That's important distinction. So it's an organization, just remember that MTD is an organizational decision, it's not necessarily a technical decision. All right, so let's go back to our example, our, our incident that happened, right? And let's kind of look at it from a perspective of, we have ransomware. Now, a lot of the cases with ransomware, people, people don't understand is if you have cyber insurance, they're not gonna let you actually touch your computers during this, they're gonna make sure that there needs to be a forensics audit. So if you've established that your RPO is 24 hours, so you can't lose anything more than 24 hours, you need to get back up and running relatively quickly. If you have an RTO of, let's say, 48 hours, that means you have 48 hours from the time that it, the incident happens to recover all your systems. Now, what is your maximum tolerable downtime? How long can you stay in business? How long before this is a major impact on your business? Some people, they might say it might be 24 hours. Some people might say it might be a week. You have to be realistic with that. You have to look at it from that perspective. So let's, in this example, let's say our, our, our RPO is eight hours, our RTO is 24 hours, and our maximum tolerable downtime is 48 hours. Now, if we have an RPO of, of eight hours, that means we have to be doing consistent backups that are protected and can't be destroyed at least every eight hours probably more often than that, but at least every eight hours to roll back. The RTO of 24 hours means we have to have our IT systems back up and running 24 hours. However, in ransomware, if they lock your machines and they won't let you touch them, you have to account for that. So a business continuity plan, you have to say, okay, well, I'm gonna need systems that are standby systems in a different spot or maybe standby equipment in a different location that I can keep my business running. Basically, while the forensics is happening. Now, if we go back to our maximum tolerable downtime of 48 hours, okay, we got a lot of work to do. We have to figure out how to get the business back up and running within 48 hours and catch up. So if that's the case, if those timelines actually do exist and they're that close together, you're going to need something like a warm site or a hot site with equipment, with things to get you running, or else 
you're going to miss that. And you have to take that into consideration because your business might not survive that. Now, I'm not trying to use this as, as, a, as a way to scare you. I'm just saying this is the things you have to think about. If you manufacture things and you have equipment that you have to use to produce something and you have a fire, do you have a contractual obligation to produce so much of that within a certain period of time? If you do, you might need another machine in a different location. You might need computers in a different location just in case something happens. This is the stuff you have to think about. We have to look at business continuity is all about keeping our business running throughout an incident, whatever happens. It could be a supply chain issue. It could be a pandemic. That's business continuity. Disaster recovery is like how do we recover from like an IT failure? Or I guess you could even, even extend that out to a machine failure. How do we recover from that? And then you have to use RTO, RPO, RPO, RTO, and MTD to determine what makes sense for your business. Now, I know this is a lot, and we I'll probably try to do a deeper dive on this, but over the next couple of weeks, what I'm going to do is I want to break this down a little bit further, and we're going to kind of go through, like, how do we construct a high-level business continuity plan? How do, we const- how do we run a business impact analysis? And how do we actually look at disaster recovery and design maybe like a high-level plan for any type of business? And then that will finish out the, the, the month, and we'll go forward. So... I hope this was helpful. I know this is a lot of terms. I'll try to put some definitions in the video for you. Uh, If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. Like, subscribe, follow, share, please. Again, if you have any kind of questions, go to techyears.com. You can talk to us for 15 minutes. No obligation. We just want to talk. We want to help people. And until next time, stay cyber safe.